Itzhak Perlman, the reigning virtuoso of the violin, enjoys superstar status rarely afforded a classical musician. Among his achievements, 16 Grammys, performing with every major orchestra at venerable concert halls around the world, and a Presidential Medal of Freedom. Aside from his remarkable artistry, Perlman is beloved for his irrepressible charm and his masterful teaching. A new documentary called Itzhak explores Perlman's struggles as a polio survivor and Israeli emigre and highlights the loving and enduring relationship between him and his wife, Toby. Here's a look. Anything that happened in my childhood had to do with yes practice, no practice. He approaches music the way he approaches everything in life, with passion and with joy. Toby was blown away by Itzhak's playing, and she was a goner. I she was a goner. goner. <laughs> And joining me now are the stars of Itzhak, Itzhak and Toby Perlman. Welcome, both of you. It's such an honor to have you guys here. Thank you. Nice to be here. Well, let's go back to the beginning. Itzhak, were your parents musical? Did you inherit your gift from them? My parents were music lovers, but they were not uh, musical, as, and they were certainly not professional musicians. So where do you think you, you got this gift? I have no idea. Yeah. I, all I know is where I wanted to play was because I was uh, listening to violin playing on the radio in Israel, yeah. and, I, and I said, that's what I wanted. And, and in the documentary, you say you choose your instrument because of the music, the kind of music you hear in your head. Because violin is what you heard? Yeah. When I heard the violin, yeah. I thought it was something I would like to do. So you were born in Israel, and you lived there, and the plan was, as the documentary shows, to come to the United States, where you're going to perfect your, your craft and launch your career. But surprising to me, your disability got in the way initially. I did not realize that it was my disability that got in the way. I mean, it, I, just thought, I just thought that something got in the way, but I had no idea because when my parents were concerned, they were, in, they were concerned about my practicing and my doing the best I could as a, as, as a, as a player. The polio that I had did not come into, into something that was very important. That, that was, when people looked at it, they, they thought it was uh, something that was serious, but mm -hmm. I didn't think so. I agree with you that the focus was not on your disability at all. I never, I certainly never focused on it. And I don't think your parents did either. Mm -hmm. I think we focus on it now, because now that you're in a scooter, we have all kinds of problems relating to access and yeah. airplanes and yeah. nothing but problems, really. It's very yeah. difficult. But it wasn't while he was walking. How did you guys meet? We met at a summer music camp. Was it love at first sight? Yes. Or really? For me, yeah. it was love at first sight. For him, he said, you know, the no guy who always says <laughs> no to everything. Let me think about it. Let me think, <laughs> right, right, right. In fact, you asked him yeah. to marry you. Yeah. Did he say yes? No, he didn't say anything. He was speechless well, for we one were... of the few times in his life. <laughs> I was 17, for heaven's sakes. You yeah. know, I mean, somebody comes to you and said, "Will you marry me?" I, I went. <laughs> <laughs> but you decided to to start dating somebody else, right? Yes. Yeah. Also true. So what did you say? What did you say to that? I didn't. Obviously, say anything. you didn't say forget it. No, take a walk. I was just unhappy. Yeah. You know, I really was unhappy. We evolved. But it worked out in the end, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, although you guys share many things, of course, your Jewish heritage, religion, music, you're both musicians, you're a violinist as well. Well, I used to be. Yeah, and, and your love of baseball. Yeah. But you're very different. You come from very big, different backgrounds. You were born here. Your parents were born here in New York. You were born in Israel. Your parents were from the po Polish ghetto. Yes, but the values were the same. It's almost as if we mm. were brought up together because we're coming from entirely different places and at the same time, the same place. Is that right? There was never any friction, the differences from no. your origin? No. But you complemented each other, right? There are some things that you knew that you didn't know. Yeah, sure. Talk about that. Well, I want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, let's just talk about the musical difference. You were raised as a performer. Right, right. A special performer, mm -hmm. unlike anything else. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. But you also do more music, actually. But I was raised by a father who, who 
actually planned what I was listening to, what I was allowed to listen to, what I wasn't allowed to listen to, who thought about the whole big picture. And in the end, of course, I'm so grateful to him yeah. because I was able to slide into this life in a very comfortable fashion. Yeah. So the marriage began a brilliant partnership, a partnership in many respects, right? I mean, you say in the documentary that you are his biggest critic. How does that manifest itself? Well, I you trust, know. I trust her. Yeah? If I say. More than anyone else? Well, absolutely. Yeah. I, I trust her because I know that Toby, at least our relationship, Toby does not feel that she cannot say anything that she feels is a problem if she hears it when I play. And I welcome the uh, uh, criticism from her because I know that she's not going to just say, oh, that sounded really good, you know. And I can tell, you know, I can tell when it's good and when it's sort of okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like, mm, how was it? It was good. You know, that was, it was, you know, <laughs> no, so, so that helps. That's very helpful. To but me. everybody needs a coach. I mean, look yeah. at baseball. Yeah. These guys, they have a batting coach and a pitching coach and the and singers of course have coaches yeah sure and tennis players have coaches yeah. and the coaches travel with the players mm -hmm. and we're talking about the greatest players in the world yeah. everybody needs another set of eyes and ears but it's very funny because instrumentalists do not have coaches yeah. usually if you think of a pianist a violinist or anybody a cellist who plays an instrument they they may have somebody that they trust but they don't have Coaches like singers are, that's, that's the tradition, mm -hmm. to have a coach. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that tradition. Yeah, let's talk about the Perlman musical program. You, you founded it, right? Yes. What does it do? What's, what's its mission? We have several programs under that umbrella name. And the, I guess the, the meat and potatoes program is the seven week summer music school. Um, for pre-college age, string players only, no pianists, no woodwinds. And it does try to create, I want to say family-like environment, but that's not right either, because families, you know, squabble all the time. And we don't, we don't, <laughs> don't want... Squabble. In fact, you said, and this surprised me, you said, you know, the music is just an excuse. Yes. It's about life. That's right. Yeah. It's about life. It's about how to get along. It's about how to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. It's about how to take a chance. And in terms of asking them to take a chance, mm -hmm. we have to create a, a safe environment. They don't have a teacher who yells at them. Mm -hmm. They have a teacher instead who says, now how do you think that, how do you mm -hmm. feel about how that went? Mm -hmm. What do you think we could change? Mm -hmm. How do we want to work on this concerto? Mm -hmm. And I, I think we've had a good deal of success with our kids in that they are close to one another, they feel. It's the other. That's the other thing that's important, how their relationship with each other, you know, how do they treat your colleague, yeah. your fellow student, you know, how do you do that? Well, let me ask you this, you know, you, you look from the outside, you look at this documentary and you guys seem charmed, have a charm life, yeah. everything's going that's for true. you, it's great. Is there anything that you would have done differently if you could do it again? Myself? Yeah, I guess both of you. I don't know, things kind of turned out pretty good. <laughs> What do you think? Did they turn out pretty good? I think they did. <laughs> I would have had more babysitters. <laughs> I would have had more help. I'm exhausted just thinking about what we did. More babysitters. I, I agree with that. Well, <laughs> I'm glad you guys did what you did. If that meant that you'd be here with me today. I have about 20 more questions, but I'm all out of time. It's I can tell me it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. For Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's Ock, the documentary, is playing in theaters in New York and Los Angeles now and will be released nationwide at a later date. It will have its exclusive U.S. broadcast television premiere as part of the American Master Series on PBS.